Alright guys, we're gonna take a chill in today's video. Ever wondered why atheists don't have a purpose in life for the thousandth time? Well, here we go. As Christians, what is the purpose of our lives? I think that actually what I can say is that what I'm gonna answer right now for Christians is, I believe, the purpose of our lives for all people, whether they are Christian or not. This is the actual purpose of their life. Isn't that kind of sad? I mean, that just doesn't sit right with me. Why is it that the purpose of your life is defined by someone else? You're born into this world with an exact intention, an exact floor plan, if you will, on how you should live your life and what the purpose of your life is. That, to me, is pretty sad. And I don't mean sad in like a pathetic way, I mean sad like actually sad. At the end of the day, one's life is their own, and what purpose they assign to themselves is theirs alone. I'd be upset if someone out there defined my purpose for me. Christians might say this is beautiful, but I think if you take a step back and look at it objectively, Objectively, it's very slave-like. You become a puppet rather than an individual, and that's sad. So, like from a, from a from a, a standpoint where there is no God, um, not that everybody who's not a Christian believes there's no God. I'm not saying that, but but from the standpoint where there is no God, there is effectively no transcendent purpose for our lives. What even is transcendent purpose? For me, I want to make the world a better place for humanity by helping the advancement of science and technology. That's why I work in the field I work in. So is my purpose here in life considered, quote, transcendent purpose? It sure sounds like it to me, but I don't know how you're defining it. That being said, I find this transcendent purpose, whatever it is, to be silly. Again, you should be defining your own purpose, and whether or not that has a large-scale implication like being, quote, transcendent is up to you. Each person has their own different purposes, and it's sad to have this defined for you upon the moment you were born. You can have self-determined purposes. I'm going to purpose to do this or that, but there's no way to measure whether that's your real purpose, like your created purpose or not. What do you mean real created purpose? There's no such thing. Now, you can believe you have a spiritual purpose when you're in a religion, but that doesn't mean this type of purpose actually exists. For us atheists, there's no reason to have this grand purpose defined by a spiritual being. If anything, not having this kind of purpose strengthens our individual purposes we define for ourselves here on Earth. Like, for example, I want to be able to help other people more and be kinder to those around me, because I know there is nothing after this life. I want to donate to charity, combat climate change, spread knowledge on COVID-19, because this is the only life we have and problems in the real world will affect the only lives people will ever experience. I'll be spending more time with family and cherishing my time with friends because there is no grand transcendent purpose out there defined for me. Acknowledging that there is nothing more out there grounds us more in the current reality, and I think that makes our purposes a lot more beautiful. You could think of the analogy of a hammer. If I make a hammer, it's designed to hammer nails in, among other things. Um, so its purpose is to hammer in nails, pull them out, do that sort of thing. That's its actual purpose because I have intent when I made it. But let's say that something very much like a hammer just sort of accidentally fell together in the forest. Would it have a purpose, even if it looked identical to a hammer, would it have a purpose the way the hammer does? I know it would have things it's good at, but it wouldn't have purpose in the same sense. This is kind of similar to the watchmaker argument, but different, I suppose. I don't appreciate the, quote, accidentally fell together into a hammer part because that's a complete misrepresentation of evolution and how humans came about, but whatever, I'll let it slide. Lots of things I want to point out about this analogy. First of all, why does it matter if a hammer was created on purpose by someone or an accident? If at the end of the day, it is functional, it has the same value. Second of all, this analogy doesn't work because this hammer is still being thought of as only having one functionality and that hammering is the only thing it is capable of doing. But that's not actually the case here if we want to make this analogy accurate. Instead of hammers, we should think of multifunctional complex machines. These machines are capable of doing anything and a variety of things. On one hand, you have one of these machines that was created to do just one thing and one thing only, let's say hammering. And on the other hand, the other machine is capable of doing anything it can define for itself. If you think about it like this, then the first machine feels awfully like a slave, doesn't it? It has the capability to do so much more, but instead is programmed to do only one thing it was built for, which is hammering. I'd much rather be the second machine. It could, and if you made it a smart, if you made it smart, this pseudo hammer, and intelligent, it could determine, hey, I'm, I'm good at hammering and nails, I suppose I'll be, I'll make that my purpose because I'm good at it. Or maybe it decides I enjoy um, frolicking among the bananas. And then maybe that just, it decides that's its, its purpose now because it has a self-determined purpose. But you can't actually say that purpose is transcendent. That purpose has ultimate, you know, value and meaning beyond just sort of the determination of the individual. Nor can you actually weigh the goodness or badness of that purpose very easily because it's just, 
you do what you want. Of course, there is no way to weigh your own purpose that you define for yourself because there is no objective measurement for something like this. The purpose you define for yourself has value because it is valuable to you. But of course, that doesn't mean everyone has meaningful purposes. Of course, that doesn't mean everyone has a meaningful purpose. Some people have weird purposes or lame purposes or purposes without meaning, and some may not have a purpose at all. And that's okay. What's important is that these people defined it for themselves and it wasn't involuntarily given to them by someone else. Um, the purposelessness of life without God is is a is a pretty psychologically daunting thing to consider. And e there's even philosophers in the past who acknowledge that without God, there is no purpose and there is no moral values um, or duties. Okay, I don't want to get too intensive on this since he's being very vague about it. Of course, there are morals and duties in a world without God because we define those morals and duties. Moving on. And then determined that they would just kind of pretend that there was like some calling this the noble lie, like we'll just lie to ourselves and say that we have purpose when in fact we really don't. Okay, so now you're just being an asshole and saying, if your purpose isn't what God intended for you, specifically my God of the Bible, then your purpose is just a noble lie. How can you possibly say that with a straight face? Now, look, if you want to have your own purpose be defined for you by someone else and follow it strictly, that's your decision to make. I think it's sad, but I'm not going to think my purpose is objectively better than yours. But instead of respecting other people's purposes, you're here calling it a noble lie. Um, I, I do think that those who try to say that there is true and genuine, like transcendent, ultimate purpose and meaning and values without God, I think that they're incorrect. I think their philosophical arguments fall. Okay, well, you're being incredibly vague here, so I'm not even going to respond to that. So here's one thing. There are thousands of religions out there, all with very dedicated followers. What is their purpose in life? It's similar to yours, where you follow and worship a certain god, a transcendent purpose, if you will. But why is their purpose different than yours and other followers of Christ? It's because they defined it for themselves. You defined your purpose for yourself by being a part of Christianity. Your purpose wasn't given to you by God. It was given to you partly by the people who taught you Christianity, and then you took it and made it your own. So the question that we have then is, with God in the picture, what is our purpose? It's nice that I have some, but what is it? What is my purpose? And I want to uh, tackle this, you know, from the perspective of... Um, well, what I've, what I've heard in the past from people is that, you know, glorifying God and enjoying him forever is our purpose. And I would agree with that, but I don't know that that fully answers my questions about purpose when I say that. I, I think that the statement, the answer, glorify God, enjoy him forever, may not answer enough of my questions about what is my purpose for me to be clear on it until I've really thought it through. Okay, so there you go. You just basically admitted it yourself. You defined your own purpose. Of course, it was partly guided to have something to do with God, but at the end of the day, your purpose is still different than other Christians. The fact that your purpose and other Christians' purposes are different is all that needs to be said. Thank you to everyone for watching, and thank you to Fireshard, Alan Morton, Miss Fixit, and Edward Martin. I'll see you in the next video, whenever that will be.